Nicorette Fruit Chill, the stop smoking gum that helps fight cravings and is coated with a great fruit flavor. So you might actually use it, which means this time it could help you quit. Nicorette Fruit Chill. Start chewing, start quitting. There are cruise lines that tell you when to relax, when to play, and when to eat. Then there's freestyle cruising, only from Norwegian Cruise Line, where you're free to whatever. So, after months of planning and preparation, the wait is over. This partnership between high-end auctioneering and high-end entertainment has come to fruition. The lots have been selected, photographed, and cataloged, and placed on display for all to see as a single collection one last time. Where will all these great treasures representing the last 40 years end up? Your guess is as good as mine. I'm looking forward to see uh, what kind of noise this auction makes. I think it's, it, it's exciting. I think it will stimulate a kind of multi-leveled, multifaceted response. It should be quite successful. Historically, in terms of television, yeah, these things these things are important. I'm pretty sure from all indications that it's going to exceed the expectation. So we're going to start with our first lot. Everything will be shown up on the screen. We're starting with next generation movies, manuscripts, and production art. And for the first lot, this is the call sheets and customer notes. How about $300 to start this? OK, $300. Gentleman's bid at $300, $350. At $350 on my left now, at $350, $400 online. $1,200, very last row at $1,200, not yours now. At $1,200 then, it's against the room, it's against the internet bidder at $1,200. All for selling for $1,200. $261. And now time to start an auction. Fascinating. I guess the interesting thing is when you when you make a film or television show, the props, the costumes, those are all tools for, for production, mm -hmm. and you don't really think of it beyond that. And so, so to have these things preserved, to have these things going into the hands of people who are going to love it, it's uh, it, it's it's a bit of validation for us. Yeah. This is the hero model of uh, of Space Station Deep Space Nine. It was in every episode of the television series Deep Space Nine. It's it's designed so that you can rake the the, uh, the light across it. And, it, and the detail comes out of it, and you, you get the sense that this isn't just a six-foot model, but it's hundreds and hundreds of feet in diameter. Nowadays, most visual, many visual effects are done with computer-generated images. So the, the role of, of visual effects miniatures is, is, is steadily shrinking. And the Deep Space Nine model, I think it's truly fabulous model. It's how about $4,000 to start? $4,800 on this side now. Yeah, that's my girl. $20,000. 50,000, 60,000, 70,000, 80,000, 90,000 dollars, 100,000, 110. We're selling for 110. So coming on Bird of Prey, you think this is like the most photographed uh, model in Star Trek? I mean, it was in Probably. so many different incarnations. They put a price on these things, but what we're really hoping is that there's a Star Trek fan, that this piece, you know, you know they grew up watching it, and this is, the, this is their favorite Star Trek. We're just really hoping it goes to the right person. And we're going to start with the Klingon Bird of Prey. 40,000, 50,000 with Kate. 70,000, 80,000, 90,000, 100,000, 150, 200,000. It's getting hot in here. Last chance for $260,000. Laura. I thought that too. I'm like, what would I want from this auction? But see, I have to go back in time and think, I could have had anything from these damn catalogs. I have a storage room with nothing but Star Trek stuff in it. All of it, you know, my, my own. Is a, it's not stuff that I've nicked. I didn't walk away with things. Um, maybe I should have done. I have a few souvenirs. I wish I'd taken more, actually. I wish I'd, now they're selling it, I wish I'd taken more. I would have taken this little tootsie if I could have. Of course, I can't get away with that. Don't be me. I was offered <laughs> any number of the original costumes, you know. And I know, you know, I had more of them and, you know, time to move on. And I had some personal things that, that uh, 
that I let go, for which I, which I regret now. Most of the items I'll be bidding for today are costumes from Next Generation and some scripts. Oh, some of the clothing is, I think, for me at least, is most interesting. Some of the costumes. Well, the Enterprise. <laughs> I would like to just get my hand up to say I bid on it, but I no, have no chance of winning it. But that would just be cool just to bid on it. I really wanted to get the backlit um, Cardassian symbol. Oh, there's a few pieces that I'm interested in having. Oh. I spent probably, I don't know, twice as much as I expected to. It's crazy. <laughs> we, we, we expected the, the prices to be higher than the higher estimated, than the book, but, not, but, but not, this. not that much. There's phone bidders, there's online bidders. Uh, you don't know where the bids are going to be coming from. I'm selling online for 4500 So I can't bid too much. My wife will do things that will be unspeakable to me if I go too high, so. <laughs> Ask Saul. Saul, are you scared of her? Yeah, I'm scared of her, He's too. He's scared of her, too. She's very scary. We're both scared. I think wardrobe really has a high value, will have a high value, because it's stuff that pe characters wore. These were actually used in the 1964 and or 1965 pilots. And they originally were color blue. And with time, they faded and changed color to purple. I was one of the people who really hated my uniform. I was not a spandex fan. And uh, I would have been happier and sort of loose. A nice Armani suit would have suited me. Lot 686, late season version of Captain Picard's Starfleet uniform. Bid online at $3,000. At $4,000, bid in the room at four, four, two, four, five, seven thousand $7,000, a new bidder, $9,000. For $9,000, then was selling to the online bidder. Sold at $9,3405. I did see that the Dixon Hill trench coat and the, and the fedora got a, 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 a reasonable price. And I actually think, had I been in the room, I might have bid on that. If only it's something that I could actually wear. I love that one. Now look at that. It's easy. This one's not going, and I'm going to get this one. $1,000 then. Our youngest bidder here. Oh, $1,100. A new bidder here in the room. $1,200. She's back. My little friend's bid. $2,800. This is Helen of uh, Tribeca, and a third generation Trekkie, starting with my mother through me, and I've uh, passed it on to her. But come back here. Oh, now she's shy. She wasn't shy when she was bidding. You can't bid against her. I mean, look at her. She has that lovely smile on her face and a smart move. Got to sell for $600. I did. I won toss the Tosk mask. It's sort of the, the surrounding scales, not the actual face, but I believe it was actually worn by the actor, which is way cool and really just a blessing because I got it for $900 and nothing in that room is going for under $2,000. So it's like a score for the little guy, <laughs> you know. $900 still ladies bid at $900 that it's selling all through for $900. Yay! Like I kind of feel like throwing up. I'm so excited. <laughs> Bones, what is it? Answer me. Jim, this ship is dissolving. My hand just passed through a man and a table. Get back up here on the double. 978 is next. Dr. McCoy's spacesuit from the Tholian web at 40,000, 42,000, 55,000, 75,000, 85,000, 100,000, 120,000. Selling to the phones for 120,000. Oh, thank you, Jamie. Yeah, these prices were higher than even we thought. Uh, and he's rich, and it was still oh, too well, much money rich, for him. I'm rich. I'm a poor man. But in the middle of my big bid, one item I really wanted, number 110. What happens in front of everyone? My wife calls. Talk about trying to keep tabs on me. She must have a mental link that I'm bidding four to five grand. Could be some form of space madness we've never heard of. Okay, 984 is next for the small battle damaged USS Reliant miniature model. $24,000 gentlemen's bid at $24,000 all through selling for $24,000. Realistically, I didn't think I'd have a chance. I thought it was going to go to a museum or, you know, a huge prize private buyer. But I stuck to my guns. 
I stuck in there, I dug in, and I got her. And she's mine, she's coming back with me. <laughs> after, after the auction, Andy just had his head in his hands for about half an hour, and his face was just red. The realisation of what he'd just done, just one the reliant. I think the only people that hate the online bidders, that seems to be us against them. All done, Matt. Online. We're selling to the telephone. Sold. The phone and the internet, I wish, were disconnected, uh, to be quite honest. Um, I always applaud when somebody in the room wins a piece, and if I'm, I'm bidding against somebody in the room, I'll tend to, to bail out quicker than I will if somebody on the phone and the internet, just because um, I'm, I don't know, there's some sort of camaraderie, I guess, going on inside the room. Last number, 357. The Starship Voyager miniature model, go boldly. A hundred thousand. A hundred and five thousand. A hundred and ten, sir. A hundred and ten thousand. You don't want to lose it for five thousand dollars, do you? I mean, you sit there and you, and you, you judge. You can tell. If the guy on the phone's slowing down, you know he's getting to his limit. His competitor was a phone bidder on that particular piece. And that guy was probably watching how he was reacting to that, his bids, you know, whereas we, we're sort of blind against <laughs> who the phone bidder is. So in some, uh, I suppose you could say he almost had an advantage over us, but he just had a paddle in his so he didn't flinch at all. Last chance. Thank you, sir. Well done. I found this inside. Uh, lot 537 Picard's Resikin Flute. Have I pronounced that right? Two pieces in the lot here. It's been a little bit of interest in this. That, that damn flute. You'll see. I want the flute. Captain Picard's flute. That's why I came and how I got interested in it was to see if I could pick up the flute. And everybody I've told that I was coming here, their first question is, are they auctioning off the flute? That flute's gonna go for 10 grand. And, well, <laughs> We can start this straight away at $13,000. Any advance now at $13,000? 35000 online. Last chance at $40,000. <laughs> it doesn't play. It's not a real flute. So, for the Enterprise A model and power supply, 60,000 with Stephanie, 70,000, 75,000, 90,000, 100,000. The Starship Enterprise, NCC 1701A. Now, this is where the bridge was, and my seat would have been somewhere just around here. This is what you saw in the movies, and this is the oldest of all the models that we have here in the collection at Christie's. Selling for $240,000. Continual fire, all phases. Not 712, Starship Enterprise D. 5,000 ain't gonna cut it this time, I don't think. 100,000, Jamie's bid, 110,000, Kathy's bidder, 130,000, 150,000, 200,000, 300,000. Don't clap yet. <laughs> this is the Hero Starship Enterprise D from Star Trek The Next Generation. The thing that most people notice, of course, is that it is a dramatically different design than the original Enterprise. Mm -hmm. And uh, Andy Probert, who designed the ship, was under orders from Gene Roddenberry to make it, uh, to make sure that you, you knew that this was a whole generation beyond what Kirk's ship was. It's, it's, it's truly a beautiful piece. 400,000. 450,000. At 500,000, we're <laughs> So for 500,000. We were totally blown away when, uh, when, the, when the D was sold. I mean, we expected it to do well, yeah. but nothing like what happened. It was astonishing, yeah. I, I'm, I'm dazzled by, uh, by what people paid for some of that stuff. We achieved our goal, and our goal was to, like I said, and I've said it so many times over the months, 
is to, to get this stuff into the hands of the fans because we know that they're going to keep it, they're going to treasure it, they're going to keep it safe. So I think we feel like we've achieved our goal. Thank you all so much. You have been so patient with us for the last three days. Thank you very much. When we come back, we'll pay a special visit to some of the winning bidders as they share their newly acquired pieces of the Star Trek collection. And finally, we'll conclude our journey as some of the cast and crew share their closing thoughts on the Star Trek family and its enduring legacy. Star Trek Beyond the Final Frontier is brought to you in part by Outback and by Doubletree. Go out back tonight, where fresh ahi tuna is seasoned and seared. The salmon, tender. The steaks, thick and juicy. Your only worry, you might have to share. Let's go out back tonight. Tonight, let go. Life is better when together. Go out back. Up and down, stay cool, fool. Just take it easy, that's the rule, fool. <laughs> we may not all be geniuses, but we can all do something smart. Like leasing a Hyundai Sonata for just $1.99 a month during our President's Day event. Right now, a new Sonata is $1.99 a month with $9.99 due at signing. It's a smart deal on a really smart car. Now, you can own the DVD and companion book to 10 Days That Unexpectedly Changed America for only $49.95 through this exclusive TV offer. To order, just call our toll-free number or shophistorychannel.com slash 10 days. A lot of car ads are focused on getting you in right now. Like, if you don't hurry, you'll feel like an idiot. But think about when things like durability and reliability and overall quality are really going to matter to you. Like every day you drive your vehicle. That's when a Toyota will make you feel like a genius. Get 1.9% APR financing on a brand new 2007 Highlander. Or get $1,000 cash back. Toyota, a smart way to keep moving forward. Tasty cake candy cakes, they were always my favorite too. You know why they're so good? A fresh baked taste. Your grandfather used to give them to me every day after school. You do know why there's at least two candy cakes in a pack. Why? Because they're meant to be shared. Grandpa told me you'd try that. Did he? There's nothing quite like the fresh baked taste of a tasty cake with a moist, delicious cake, rich icing, and creamy filling. These are good. Easy to pass on and hard to pass up. Now that's tasty. This Sunday, catch all the best dog fights. Take the high-speed game of chicken. In one explosive marathon. In one intense evening. I have to pit your strengths against the enemy's weakness. Lock on. I can see the twinkle of the guns. Man, this is like the movies. The Dog Fights Marathon. This Sunday night at 8 on the History Channel. Scotty, beam us up fast. Star Trek has influenced our technology today, but how far are we really? From warp drives, holodecks, and teleportation. You'd have to heat a person up to 100 billion degrees in order to make that happen. Fascinating. Star Trek Tech, next on the History Channel. To say the auction was a success would be an understatement. The Christie's Star Trek auction broke records for pop culture memorabilia sales. The reality is no one at Christie's or Paramount had any indication the sale would do as well as it did. But it's no surprise either. Fans from all across the globe came to New York. Some bid online and others by phone. The response was overwhelming, to say the least. I guess putting on an auction of this magnitude is a little like the life of Star Trek itself. This auction went where no auction has gone before. Bids on the telephone then, and I will sell. $9,500. Forty-five hundred dollars. At eight thousand dollars. Sold it is at two thousand. At thirty-five hundred dollars. Four thousand. Sold online. Sold for forty-eight hundred dollars. 
Sold. Sold for five hundred thousand dollars. With the auction over, all one thousand lots have found new homes. But to see them for yourself, you might need a passport. So here we are, a couple of months uh, after the auction. Uh, we've gathered some of our spoils of war together and uh, managed to get some of the guys together who uh, were, were there bidding in the action. Um, some amazing pieces. This is just a handful of them that we've got on display today. One of my key pieces which has come back with me, which I was mildly happy about getting, was the Reliant here. <laughs> a little baby. And I sh was sure she was just going to escape and I wasn't going to get her, but managed to get her and she's back here with us now, back home and safe. The whole, the whole thing was amazing, the uh, auctioning off all these pieces paramount and uh, just had a brilliant time. You know, with all collecting, it's things are worth what they are worth to the individual who wants them. Behind me I have my uh, crate that came with all the goods uh, from the Christmas auction and uh, having it sent over the Atlantic and it's finally here. We have to find the guns. <laughs> if you want something, I know the passion of collecting. I, I know it. I know when my stomach starts to knot and tighten when I look at something and think, I want that. Behind me is our ship that we were able to purchase at Christie's. It's the uh, Karima class starship from uh, an episode of Deep Space Nine. Uh, considering that I paid $4,000 for this ship, I think I got a bargain. So I'm very happy with it. I have my. Uh, one of my original earpieces, and I think that's that's just that was touched my heart because every time I see it, I think healing frequencies open. <laughs> you know, I've been fencing or involved with fencing practically my whole life, and it started because of Star Trek. And this is Jean Luc Picard's fencing outfit, and when it was up for auction, I said have to have this. Well, actually, I said it was for my brother, but he's not getting it. I'm kind of glad this sort of happened. So the people who really wanted to have something from the show, and I'm sure that they looked and thought, what is the most meaningful thing to me? And that they got something mean meaningful. They got something that they prized. You know, we don't often get that in life. Hi, I'm Giles. This is my flat in London. This is also my uniform that I bought from Christie's Star Trek auction. And this is the other uniform I bought. It's the Viceroy uniform from the movie Nemesis. I'm never going to put on a Star Trek suit again, that's for sure. I do have one. I have the studio several years ago, actually. Rick Berman arranged to present me with one of the last of the captain's suits that I wore. So, so that's stored away. This is the one I was looking for. <sighs> Yes, this is the uh, Captain Picard uh, uh, jacket from the first uh, season. Pretty cool, pretty cool. My desk uh, was, was up for sale. And I looked at the catalog before the auction, and I was, for a moment, very, very brief moment, I was tempted. I thought, wouldn't that be fun to have my desk again and have it always there? And, and then I thought, well, no, it's not a desk, it's just a prop. It's a piece of, you know, constructed furniture. So this is my uh, Star Trek room. It covers all TV series. Uh, what we have down here is uh, Data's arm, which we got from the auction, if you have a look in there. Great, great piece to have. OK, not only um, did I get the real Voyager from uh, Christie's, but we also got an Enterprise C. I mean, to have a Voyager and Enterprise is, is, is fantastic. Uh, to have either, either one of them, I'd be pleased to have, to have both. Happy guy. The transporter is the, um, one of the things I would have just looked by, but the guy next to me just happened to say, you know, try this, everybody needs to do this at least once. And he's right, everybody needs to slide these slides, I think, if he's ever watched the show. But of course, I had to go home and record the real sound so I could play with the buttons and make it look official. When I... choice. <laughs> Brings a little Star Trek home to you, just being able to, to do something like that. A few years ago, I didn't even know your name. Today, I can't imagine a day without you. Captain Janeway to the bridge. 
When I look back, I have fond memories of working with the cast and crew. And some of my closest friends that I'm in contact with today are from Star Trek. Which just goes to prove that when you travel the universe together, there's a good chance you'll form a bond for life. I don't think you've lost a thing. And I think you've gained more than you realize. You're happy here. Happier than I've ever known you to be. There's a, there's a sense that you're a member of the Star Trek family, for lack of a, lack of a better word, and that you're responsible for a certain amount of, of um, Roddenberry's legacy and, and vision, and the relationships of the uh, characters of the shows were very similar, and I think that, that the relationships of the, the actors were as well. The, the happy, happy memories that I had of, of that time, and they are, they're largely uh, really very positive and uh, you know, working with those guys, they, they taught me to be irreverent and to enjoy laughing. I, I loved them all, you know, in the end, when I had to do all those scenes of saying goodbye to them, it was just, it was hell, it was hell. When I first took command of this post, all I wanted was to be somewhere else, anywhere but here. But now, five years later, this has become my home and you have become my family. I enjoyed the crew immensely. I enjoyed, you know, working with very, very talented people. I enjoyed the writing. The writing was very intelligent. I laughed every day. <laughs> I feel very blessed in that my professional colleagues have become, over the years, uh, good personal friends. And, you know, some of them we've lost. Uh, Jimmy Doom was a particularly uh, dear friend. I, I used to call him my favorite drinking buddy. And in this derivative, mixed with alcohol, it merely deadens certain nerve inputs to the brain. Oh, well, any decent blend of scotch will do that. Oh, the irascible Jimmy Doohan Scotty. You know, <laughs> he, was, he was always blowing <laughs> off and then coming back and hugging, you know, you know. So you kind of got used to him being that kind of way. DeForest Kelly was a very sweet man, um, a very courtly gentleman of the old school. DeForest Kelly, I loved him very, very much. By golly, Jim, I'm beginning to think I can cure a rainy day. Can you help? Helped it, I cured it. I, I wish that Gene could have, you know, lived another 20 years and, and seen how, how his legacy has grown and grown and grown in this way. In the period of time that I was dealing with the four series that I worked on, uh, we produce 620 something hours of television, which is a lot of television. And uh, I think the fact that the franchise is taking a, a bit of a rest now is going to be good for it. I think people will be always looking to see if it can't be, you know, sparked into life again, because the the as I've said before, the issues, the stories that it has are um, for all time. We can't be afraid of the wind, Ensign. Take us to warp four. And for the foreseeable future, um, the, the original, the classic series, Next Generation, Voyager, Deep Space Nine, Enterprise, they will go on screening too. This isn't the end. You say that with remarkable assuredness. I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe if things don't really work out for me, I could, you know, like Brent used to say, we can always put our suits on and we can do bar mitzvahs and, you know, birthday parties and things. <laughs>